Supervisor for our uh, Pacific region, Reverend Roger Patterson. Praise the Lord, everyone! Hallelujah! It's good to be back together again in the presence of the Lord. On this opening night, you may be seated. We're so happy to have our General Director of Global Missions, Brother Bruce Howe, would you stand? It's great to have you here, sir. And it's great to have our guest speaker, also from Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, Brother Frazier. Would you please stand, Brother Frazier? Amen. God bless you. Happy to have our missionaries, Brother and Sister Robertson. Would you stand? Amen. Happy to have our aim workers, Brother and Sister James, would you stand? Amen. And happy to have Brother and Sister Mallory, who come to the Philippines to bless us all the time, would you stand? Amen. God bless you. Wow. I wish everybody could stand right here and feel what I'm feeling right now. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now there's one more I did not introduce, and that is the speaker for tonight. I'm so happy that my son, Matthew Buckman, missionary to the Czech Republic, but spent many years in Davao City, I want him to come and give us the word of the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Brother Butler. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What will we do without His presence? Amen. Amen. I want to join my voice with my father and say thank you for the invitation to be here. I also want to give honor to, to all of the leadership here. Amen. Amen. We're blessed with great leadership at the Church of the Philippines. Amen. I give honor to Brother Bodega as your General Superintendent. What a great man of God. And I Amen. I give honor to the Executive Board. I consider it a great honor that you have invited me here to be with you. Amen. Amen. I give honor to my boss, Brother Howell. <laughs> Brother Howell. Amen. My father. Amen. Other speakers, Brother Frazier. And all of our pastors and ministers who are here. Amen. We're all working together for the kingdom of God. Amen. I bring you greetings from the churches of Europe. And this is how the European churches would greet you. Slava Panum Shem.
If the media has a picture, I sent them a picture. If they can put that up on the screen. This is from our church in Prague last week. All these people are watching live right now on the stream. They're on their lunch break in Prague. These are our Filipino believers who are Bible school students in Prague training for the ministry. They're preaching the services in Prague while I'm here. The gospel will be preached in the whole world. By the whole church. The man that I'm standing next to, Brother Roger, there. Last year he started coming to our church in Prague. He was in danger of losing his visa. He had a lot of health problems. High blood pressure. High blood sugar. He was on a lot of different medications. But he came to church. And we began to pray. He was baptized in Jesus. Name. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And for the last eight months. He's taken no medication. Every month he goes back to the doctor. And they said, we don't understand it. But all of your levels are normal. His boss and his job last month gave him a promotion. He was losing his job and losing his visa. He received a promotion and more responsibility. He promoted Look at what God can do. Our God still works miracles. Amen. I consider it a great honor to bring the word of God here tonight. When I was invited to speak tonight, I began preparing many months ago. And the Lord put, put some scriptures on my heart. And I did not have the theme of the conference yet. But I really felt led by the Holy Ghost to go to the book of Hebrews. Our theme is Hebrews 11.1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is near the end of the book of Hebrews. The scriptures that the Lord gave me to preach tonight is the very beginning of the book of Hebrews. It lays the foundation for the rest of the book. I would like to read tonight from Hebrews chapter 1. Beginning at verse number 1 through verse number 4. If you could stand with me for the reading of the word. And I'll read all four verses, then I'll let you read. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past to the fathers by the prophets, hath 
hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Ang Diyos na sa karang panahon na kasulti sa mga daghan, o sa mga nagkalain-lain mga pamaagi sa gilikan at pinaagi sa manalagna, niining katapusan ng mga adlaw na kasulti ka na ito pinaagi sa iyang anak, nagitudlo niya ng mga manununod, manununod sa tanang mga butang na tumot ka niya o sa kibuhan ang kalibutan. Ngasanglit ang danag sa iyang himaya, ang maugayon ng dagway sa iyang pagkamao, o sa nagatuboy sa tanang mga butang pinaagi sa pulong sa iyang gaong, sa diya nga nagkabuhan siya sa paghinlo sa atong mga sala, nilingkod sa tuong kamot sa alam doon sa kaitas na number four, sa nahimo siyang labi pang maayo kaysa manulunda, Saglit na kapanunod siya sa usagang ngalan ng labi pang halang doon kay kanila. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, we stand upon your word. What can we do without your word? We need a word tonight, for this time, for this place, for this season. Lord, anoint our ears to hear our voice to speak and our hearts to receive from you. We thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Ang pagtuumaw kini ang atong magpasalig sa butang atong gilauman. As you continue reading on through the Hebrews chapter 11. You will begin to read about the heroes of the faith. You read about how Abraham left the land of his birth. At usap na mabasahan si Abraham ng iyang gibiyahan ng iyang natawan. And he did, sa light namin. he did it by faith. O kaya itong gihibo o pinahagi sa pato. You read about the faith of Isaac and Jacob. At usap na mabasa ang iskot ang pato ni sa ato ni Hagob. You read about the faith of Moses. Ilbisan usap kang Moses. Who was not content to remain with the Egyptians. Na wala naman siya magkutin o magpabiling sa mga Egyptohano. But he stepped out by faith. Aman siya mitin. You read about the faith of Rahab. And on and on you go. The faith in each of those individuals. Their faith led to action. True faith will lead to action. Faith is not something that will just stay in your mind. Because when you really believe something, you begin to act upon that. I can't stay the way that I was. But my faith will lead me to move forward. They didn't see the results immediately. Abraham left the land of his birth. But it was many years until he saw the results of that faith. Faith says, even though I don't see it, I'm going to keep on walking. Because I have a promise from the word of the Lord. By faith, I'm going to keep walking. So their faith led to faith. Ang kinin pagtuhod ay magtugon nato sa pagpanayon Because I will continue in faith. Eh ako magpapilin niya sa pagtuhod. Even may, though I may not see the promise fulfilled. Eh sir, pagtili na ako magkitan dayon na natuman ang mga saan. Amen. Amen. This, the foundation for this concept is left in Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. 
mao kapag ang nihing mao nga pulong isputan kayo dini sa uno-uno nga mao pagkasulat. The author of Hebrews opens up the book this way. Isukan kini sa nagsulat mga itsun sa ingani nga pagkapulong. It says, God spoke in times past. Ang Diyos naging istorya sa karaang kapanahonan. They spoke in different ways and different manners. Naging istorya sa salagkadaiyang pamaagi. And if I use my translation, kung akong gamitin ang kining akong pagkapsulti, I would say it this way, ako rin sultilog sa ingani nga pagi. In all the days gone by, na sa talang ng labay ng mga adlaw, God spoke in different ways. Ang Diyos na rin istorya sa isag-unsa na pamaagi. And the people of the days gone by experience God in different ways. Ang mga katawan sa karaang panahon na kasi natin usap sa pinaagi sa karaang paagi. They all saw God a little bit differently. Ilang nakita ang Diyos sa tunay tutay kalahian. In the Old Testament. Sa daang kasaysayan. Abraham saw God a little bit differently than Moses saw God. Abraham saw God as the one who would lead him into the promise. Moses saw God as the one who would deliver the children of Israel. When Isaiah saw God, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw him high and lifted up. When Ezekiel saw God, Ezekiel saw the one that could bring life to dry bones. They only saw parts. And their complete view of God came when they began to look at how this one saw God. And how this one saw God. And when they would put it all together, they could begin to get an outline and recognize who God is. And the faithfulness of those elders to give us faith today. Because even though they had an incomplete view of God, they were still able to walk by faith. They couldn't see it all. But they can still take the next step. So in the past, we can see the faithfulness of God. When we get to Hebrews 1.4, we will see that it says being made so much better than the angels and he's an inherited a more excellent name than they as I was studying this verse I found it's connected to Philippians chapter number 2 where it says wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord one day every knee will bow every tongue will confess we've read the end of the book 
Sabemos que está por salvaje. We know that God is victorious. Que cuando está de manera nao, hay algo Dios. He will not be defeated. El Hijo no puede. Our God reigns in the earth. La Hijo se ha levantado. Though there we may go through trials and tribulations. Even though there may be problems in this world. There is one thing that we can be sure of. Our God is going to win. In the past, he spoke to the fathers of the prophets. In the future, he will be victorious. But what does Hebrews say about right now? The book of Hebrews is going to, to show Jesus in three different ways. It's going to show him as a prophet. It's going to show him as the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And it's going to show him as the ever reigning king. So how does God speak to us today? Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 2. He's just said that God spoke to the prophets and, and the fathers in, in bits and pieces. But he says, in these last days, he's spoken to us in a different way. He's spoken to us through the Son. We know who that is. We've been singing his name all night. He spoke it to us through the man Jesus Christ. And in these last days spoken to us by his son. And through it then verses 2 and 3 he explains who Jesus is. Jesus is. Let's see who Jesus is. Let's see who the one who is speaking to us today really is. Woo. He's spoken to us through Jesus Christ. Who he has appointed the heir of all things. This is a reference back to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 2 verse number 8. It says that he has given the heathen for his inheritance. It's referenced in Acts chapter number 4. When Peter and John are praying for boldness to preach the gospel, we come to understand that the heir of all things, the all things that it's talking about, are the peoples of all the world. Under the old covenant, it was only the Jews who could be 
say. Nagpugibong pagbinahon sa unang kapanahon ng hudiyo lamang ng pinagawad kaluwas. But when we come into these last days, Apan sa atong presenting kapanahonan, He is now the heir of all things. Siya magkapanlunod na sa kanang putang. There will be people from every tongue and every nation. Kapisan sa nagkalainlaing pinulungan sa mga people from every tribe. Kasi nagkalaintao sa mga tribo. And they will all be called by the name of Jesus Christ. This will be all a part of His church. Whether we are from North America, or America, if we are from Philippines, or Philippines, if we're from Europe, or from Europe, no matter where we're from, as a matter of being Canaan. If we have been baptized in His name, then we are part of His church. And we are His people. We are all one together. That's who is speaking to us tonight. This is His church. Amen. He goes on to say at the end of verse number two. We want to also number zero two. The Onsia, by whom also he made the worlds. Kapit na agil sa kadiya na himo kini kalibutan. I was studying this. Ako ni kito na pagayo. And there's a parallel in this in this phrase. And when you read it, the first thing you think of is back to the Genesis one creation account. But when you study this, this is very different from Genesis one. But it's making a comparison. In Genesis one, God spoke the world into existence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that's what comes to mind when we read this in Hebrews 1-2. But the author of Hebrews is trying to tell us is this. Just, just like a new world was created in Genesis 1. In the incarnation when Jesus Christ came to earth, there was a new world that was created. In the, in the Old Testament, salvation was not possible. They had to rely on the sacrifices of the priests. But that, but that would just push the, the sins forward one more year. And then a new sacrifice had to be offered. There was always another offering to give. There was always something else that must be done. But when Jesus Christ came, everything changed. Because he became the perfect sacrifice. He became the lamb with no spot and no blemish. And when he went to the cross of Calvary, he stretched out his arms and he said, It is finished. And the price for sin was paid. And so now we live in a brand new world. It's not like the world of before. Because now the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed. And now we live in a world with hope. It's a hope for eternity. 
The word glory here is very significant. It means the presence and power of God. And when it's describing Jesus Christ, it says it, is, it means it's the presence and the power of God. When I was studying this, it said it's not a power equal to God. The same as But it said it's a it's a power identical to God. What was invisible? The invisible God has now become visible. What we can only hear from before. We can now see as Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to explain it. He says, it's the express person of his image. In the Greek, this is an idiom. What's an idiom? What's an idiom? In English, we have idioms. Sa English, sa Bisaya na ka ng pinulungan na naayong pasabot. In English, one of our idioms is this. Sa English, mo niya nila halit itong idioms nila. It says, going out on a limb. Or going out on a limb. To go to a limb. Oh, siya. Let me explain what that means. I'm going to explain. If you're climbing a tree, the further you go, the smaller the branch gets. And so it gets more dangerous. So we have a saying. That if someone is going out on a limb, that means they're taking a big risk. Okay? You have idioms as well. We all have idioms. This phrase is in Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 3. Is an idiom from the Greek. And it comes from people who work with metal. Here's what would happen they would melt the metal down. They would pour it into a bowl. And then they would cool it off. And then they would break the mold off. And then you would have the, the item inside, the metal item inside. And here's the concept that they had. That metal has now taken the image of the mold. They could not see what the mold was from the outside. But once that mold was broken, you can now see the image. 
And so when Hebrews is describing Jesus Christ, says, the God in the Old Testament we could not see. But everything that God is has been poured into that mold. And now the mold has been broken. And now it is revealed what God looks like. We can now see who God is. We can see God in Jesus Christ. Paul said it this way. The fullness of the Godhead. has now been made visible. We can now see him. That is the one who is speaking to us. And he says he's upholding all things by the power of his word. He's still active in this world today. God is still active in this church. God is still filling people with His Spirit. People are still receiving miracles. People are still being healed. Because He is still the God of all power. Introduction. <laughs> because what I want to preach tonight <laughs> comes from these last few phrases. <laughs> says, and he himself has purged us from our sins. It was only God that could take care of sins. We can never take care of the sin problem. So God Himself came. So that the price for sin could be paid. And then it says this. And he sat down on the right hand of the majesty. When I began to study this, I noticed that everything was pointing to this last phrase. So I thought it was all pointing to the right hand of majesty. Because when we speak at the right hand, we're talking about the power of God. And we know that He is all powerful. All power in heaven and earth is given unto His name. There is no salvation without His name. We love the power of God. Because it's the power of God that saves us. It's the power of God that keeps us. It's the power of God that does everything for us. But the more that I studied this, I discovered that it was not pointing to the right hand of majesty. Everything in Hebrews 1 points back to the verb. 
Naka iskut, naka tudlo, kininanto sa usaka pulo na dunay paglihu. Everything points to sat down. Nitudlo kini sa pulo na ningingol o nagalingkod. That's the whole point of this passage. Imunin su taon, ito ni tanan padulong sa naglingkod. It's easy to get excited about the power of God. It's not as easy to get excited about sitting down. Until I begin to study what it means. It's introducing Jesus Christ as our high priest. And when you study the role of the high priest in the Old Testament, there is one thing that you will never find. In his role as high priest, he will never sit down. The high priest is always walking. He's always offering sacrifices. He's always offering, giving offerings. Why? Because there was always something else to do. There was always another sin price to pay. There was always something else to offer. But when Jesus Christ came, after the cross of Calvary, the high priest was able to sit down. Because the work of redemption is complete. There's no more sacrifice that has to be paid. Every offering has been made. Everything that we need has been provided. Whatever you need tonight, it's available through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have faith from the 
past. We see the faithfulness of the elders. We have confidence in the future. Because God will be victorious. But right here and right now. In these last days. Jesus is speaking to his church. And he sat down. And the price. And he is ready to pour out his spirit. If you're not saying if you just stand with me right now. God's going to do something right in this place. God is going to do something Because he's already paid the price. 